Hi, my name's Bob Greenia and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Okay, in the last couple of videos I have been showing you a couple of strike marks, uh, Evo 1 and Evo 2, on the inside of the uh, outer clam of the supernova reactor. Uh, so here's just a still frame from the Supernova Evo 1 uh, image uh, video. And this um, uh, mark, the strike mark here that I highlighted and discussed, uh, I said that we may be looking at um, some sort of uh, quartz here around the outside. And of course, uh, this is aluminium to begin with, so where does this quartz come from? Well, if it's silicon, you could suggest that there is a, a fusion reactions, uh, aluminium with um, hydrogen, or there could be some uh, multiple aluminium atoms doing some um, uh, fusion fission. Uh, it's actually a nucleon exchange producing uh, magnesium and uh, silicon uh, isotope, isotopes. So you would synthesize silicon that way, and there's oxygen in the chamber to make the glass so that's one way of thinking about it. So we have this that was on the inside, and this is on the mating face uh, of the reactor. And we've got another shot here, um, which I can zoom into. And uh, these are under different uh, lighting conditions under the microscope. Uh, but it's it, it's clearly uh, um, uh, transparent, and it has a glassy-like look to it and it also has refraction. You can see that when you're putting under different lighting conditions as I did live in this previous video. But then, so where are these kind of, this quartz coming from? If this is actually uh, silicon dioxide rather, um, where is it coming from? Uh, if it's uh, uh, fusion fission, then that's one explanation. Um, but uh, when we did the NOVA testing, uh, NOVA BASIC, this is looking at the blob, and you can go and find this in our um, YouTube channel, uh, in 2017, um, there's this blob here, which is uh, silicon rich. And uh, uh, I actually say during the course of this video that uh, it could be coming from the reactor itself, uh, the, the inside quartz of the reactor. Um, and so, you know, Perhaps, you know, we have this uh, uh, on the mating face, and we have uh, this on the inside of the reactor, and we have our carbon flying around, making our plasma ball in there. How does any silicon from the inside of this get to here uh, on the inside of the uh, clamshell of the reactor? Uh, this. So, how does that? come from the inside of there and end up making these marks on the inside of the clamshell? Well, that's a very good question. Um, and uh, there is some potential answers. And uh, if we look at the interview that I transcribed between Kenneth Radford, Radford Shoulders and John Hutchison, uh, he's talking here about how um, exotic vacuum objects can uh, break so-called man-made laws of physics. Uh, and he says, the heck of it is, I can keep reducing the charge to where it becomes an item that walks right through things. That's how John's earliest work seemed to have things coming from the inside. He had been using this technique to similar to what I use and so on. He goes on about it. Um, and then in uh, this is in the uh, uh, extras on our Steemit channel. I'll, I will include all of the links as usual in the description to the video. Uh, here, he's talking about it, Evos, penetrates metal and it gets nasty mad at some point maybe, at which point it explodes. It dishevels, I should say, and it may also create a very high pressure, but it certainly dishevels and parts of it come out in various ways. Some are highly altered and transmutations and some you can say, well, were not altered at all, but you don't know whether it was altered into something else and then retransmuted back. It's re real hard to tell, so on. So this is what gives me the idea that uh, something maybe has been uh, uh, synthesized inside here or captured from here and then transported. And, and actually, um, uh, Ken Shoulders uh, does talk about teleportation of uh, material. And in fact, John Hutchison, uh, we have a sample called Meteorite, uh, which uh, is going to be a whole story in itself to analyze and uh, uh, over a long period of time when we can get to it. But that apparently is a huge lump of material 
that is all teleported material. Um, and so uh, this might seem surprising to you, uh, but this is essentially what Ken is saying shit here, that the Evo can capture things and it can walk right through things because the whole thing, including its uh, 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 ions in there, uh, becomes neutral and uh, it can transport these things. And actually, uh, Shishkin uh, et al., uh, at Dubna Science City in Moscow. They, they've done like nine, ten years of research into what they call string vortex solitons, which are a form of exotic vacuum object. And he, he they established that uh, it's been established with an error of not worse than 5% that the diameter of a microcrater on some uh, uh, film plane is directly proportional to the atomic weight of the excited nuclei and that the uh, depth is uh, within 10% of accuracy with a factor uh, is, uh, uh, is the um, uh, depth uh, of the atomic weight of the excite excited nuclei. Anyway, you can see this described in New Type of Penetrating Radiation by Alexander Shishkin. Uh, at the bottom, he, he says this point. With the passage of string vortex soliton through the material with a high degree of probability, a string vortex soliton can acquire the properties of the cores, i.e. the nucleus, of this material. So essentially, if you had a large Evo and it grabbed a lot of silicon en route or it synthesized the silicon, it could then deposit it when it exploded and disheveled, and in this case on the mating face, or that it just hit um, the the uh, inside face uh, of the uh, uh, clamshell of the reactor. So it's coming out and it's hitting here, and it's depositing its payload that was in this otherwise neutral thing. So I'm just going to summarize this with a, a chart, uh, with, a, with a graphic, uh, before I go on to the next part of the presentation. So in order to illustrate my point, I've done this rather poor drawing here, and uh, this is the bulb of our quartz uh, reactor core, and this is the horn of it. This is the inside clamshell of the aluminium uh, body of the main part of the supernova reactor, and what we've got here is the ball lightning that we've made in the center. And this is a path that a potential exotic vacuum object could take. And there are a number of options that one might consider. You may think of more, but uh, these are the ones that I have for now. Um, that could happen. Uh, one, there is some sort of uh, synthesis of the elements that we find on the impact mark on uh, either the uh, a mating face of the clamshell or on the inside of the reactor aluminium and that is synthesized in here it goes into a neutral state as observed by uh, Shishkin and by uh, Ken Shoulders and by uh, John Hutchison and it's in a neutral state and it travels through the quartz here without interacting with it and it goes over here and gets deposited over here so the material the Whatever it is we're seeing in those strike marks is synthesized in here, travels through and gets deposited. The other potential option is that it's not synthesized in here. It's captured from the inside of the quartz here, forms a blob that then goes into an exotic vacuum object, is neutral, travels out here and uh, uh, then gets deposited. So it's, it's not synthesizing the element. It's uh, transporting it, i.e. teleporting it through this uh, material uh, uh, of the quartz itself having been captured from the inside surface of the quartz. Another one is you have a, a, a neutral uh, uh, exotic vacuum object and it goes into and through the quartz and then it captures some uh, silicon uh, dioxide uh, from the outside here and then transports it from here to here uh, and then deposits it. Or a combination of this one, this one and this one and depositing whatever that combination is, or it's just an exotic vacuum object that travels from the uh, ball lightning through this, doesn't interact with it, comes all the way over here, and does some multiple aluminium uh, transmutations to say magnesium and, and, and silicon uh, for one potential, potential option that could occur. So yet yeah, there's, there's many ways that this could occur, and how do we start to uh, separate these? Well, my first thought was, well, we already know from the NOVA testing that we did in uh, 2017 that, that we do see silicon blobs in the ash. 
uh, of uh, a, a reactor. So uh, that could have been synthesized or it could have been captured, as I mentioned in the video that I just showed you. It could have been captured uh, uh, from the inside of the quartz. That That is fairly easy to discuss, but it's these things that you see out here that start to become the problem, and you need to invoke these other experiences of uh, these other authors to uh, try and explain this. So um, we need to see if uh, we are seeing any damage on the inside here, which would do uh, case 1 or case 1 and 2A, um, whether there's any damage on the outside, um, and so forth. And we really need to understand what the actual strike marks are on, on the uh, inside of the clamshell. Uh, and so we need to run a series of experiments. Um, but first, I want to show you what I've been looking at today. Uh, and that is the uh, outer and inner faces of a used and unused uh, quartz reaction vessel. So first I'm going to show you what I found on the outside area of this uh, reaction vessel that's been used just roughly a couple of times uh, and we can see what that is. I need to make sure the exposure is right. Uh, there's a periodic track here which is a little bit interesting. Those of you who know what I'm talking about you'll know why that might be interesting but uh, it's not very even, but uh, there it is. Uh, anyway, there's this one here, uh, which is quite interesting. What we're actually doing is actually uh, I'm using the focal depth of the uh, Dynalite camera to look at from the outside going through to the inside faces of this uh, glass. And so you can see here, this has got the three kind of pits here and this uh, kind of mottled uh, damage to the quartz. Um, and I have the inside face here, which are these lots of little nicks. Now, when you see these uh, um, reactors running, you actually get to see these little fingers coming out, a bit like a plasma ball sometimes. So it, it's not inconceivable to imagine that the inside face of the uh, quartz could have been pecked away, uh, uh, capturing some quartz. But then you see this kind of thing on the outside, and you think, oh, well, maybe... Maybe something has come from the inside out and it's grabbed a load of material and it's carried that forward. Um, here's some other examples. Uh, let's, let's just uh, zoom into that first so you can get a better idea of what I'm referring to here. So that's the interesting feature there. Um, again, this is a, another area. Uh, and uh, where where... It might be more interesting is when you're seeing kind of pairs of things. There's a couple of pairs, like almost like a pair there, uh, kind of a pair here. Um, uh, there's li li like a little triplet there uh, in a row, uh, maybe a pair there. I don't know, it's, it's not really very compelling for me. Um, this, this is probably one of the more interesting features that you're seeing on there. Uh, and there's these two little kind of almost like little bubbles, which actually they might just be little bubbles. I don't know. Um, not not overly convinced uh, with what I'm seeing here as being you know, very representative of action of Evos. Um, if I look at the inside here again, uh, you can see um, that it's again just little spots everywhere on the inside. Um, so, I don't know, I, I, I really do buy the argument that maybe there's something going on on the inside. I think we have to look uh, at the um, unused uh, reactor uh, quartz to establish whether um, something's going on uh, on the outside that's of interest. So, let's have a look at this next one here. Now, this, this is a little bit more interesting. There seems to be this kind of uh, feature. A bit similar to what we saw on the sun and on the um, uh, Hutchison sample, on the Hutchison ball burn sample. So you've got two kind of circles here, two kind of circles here. There's a, a black spot here, and then the mirror image has a black spot here. Uh, and then it kind of it kind of has this kind of like rotated symmetry uh, going on, or uh, you know, it's. Yes, no, I don't know. It could look like a, a, a magnetic structure. Um, still not overly convinced. Um, what's interesting is this, you know, shoulders referred to these things as 
bead chains and we've got something that almost looks like a circle here but again I'm not overly convinced and if we look at the inside here again it's just the the odd spots on there um, so that's that one and again I will share these images these will actually be as uh, Photoshop files so you'll be able to play around with them as you wish and they are, they are high resolution so uh, this this is another look you can remember maybe remember this little feature here but I think I, I probably took this because um, there's again another thing that looks a bit like a circular bead chain over here uh, I think these are just lens artifacts from the inside uh, yeah you can see this there's obviously a very deep hole on the inside there that's catching a lot of light uh, and it's uh, refracting uh, there um, there's a nice little uh, pair up here um, could that be something I don't know this actually probably is one of the most interesting here um, it does look like it's got some structure maybe some geometry going on in there um, so we have this one here which is almost like a ring and this one here so but I'm not overly convinced so I think I'm going to show you now the live camera uh, with the um, unused uh, reactor cell on it uh, core and uh, we'll see what we can see so here is the used one and here is the unused one uh, which we're just about to go and have a look at live so here's the live view on the uh, unused quartz core and uh, you can see there's a blotch over here and uh, if I change the focus there's another kind of blotch here and blotch here um, I don't know whether I, I don't think I'm seeing the spotting on the inside quite so much but maybe I am but uh, this probably tells me um, maybe that some of these features that we can see in uh, Photoshop here are just things that were on the glass from the beginning. Um, uh, this being an unused uh, piece. Um, I'm just going to move that around a little bit so we can look at other areas. Yeah, so, you know what I'm seeing here kind of makes me think that uh, it's unlikely that we can come to some very clear conclusions about what we're seeing on the yeah you see you, you've got a couple here and I don't know maybe maybe it's a reflection on the inside I don't think but you know I'm, I'm not convinced that uh, we can say for certain uh, in fact, I'm pretty convinced we can't say for certain that um, things that we are seeing on the used one here are that much different from what you see on an unused uh, core piece of glass. So I can go over here. It's a slightly different look. So this this is pitting on the actual quartz. Yeah. So I think we yeah, I mean look at this. You know, I don't know, I might need to change the uh, exposure here to make that clear. Look at that. I don't think we can make any conclusions at this stage. So uh that if I pull up this image again, um that doesn't necessarily discount that uh, it's not grabbing, you know, material from the inside or the outside. It could still be doing that, um, but it's not very convincing evidence to uh, support that theory. And I guess one way we can um, uh, address that is maybe when we have a, a fresh uh, core that we're going to run, what we could possibly do is actually mark a couple of quadrants on here. Uh, hopefully they would survive uh, the uh, process inside the reactor. And then um, actually do some microscopy on it beforehand and then look at it after, afterwards and see if we see any extra features being generated. 
um, by whatever's going on within the reactor. Um, on, on the positive side, um, if that means uh, it's not as a result of uh, something being captured here, which in itself is interesting, it could be synthesized here or it could be synthesized here. Uh, and, uh, you know, in, in whichever way you look at it, it's really quite interesting. So um, it's a bit of a mystery to solve. Uh, it might take some time. Um, but, you know, there is evidence from multiple authors of uh, uh, things passing through materials and capturing the cores from those materials. Uh, they walk right through things. And uh, we know it has created silicon. So where is this uh, glassy-like material coming from? And what is it? So thank you very much for your time, and I will see you in the next video.